My name is Roy Finch, and I'm a teacher here at Chapman University. I primarily worked as a sound designer and a music editor and a composer. I'm actually mastering an EDM record. I have a, beat, a band, an EDM band called Finnegan Finch. We're both electronic musicians. He's also a jazz artist, um, but we it's synthesizers and computers, and you know we we make music together. We tend to take stuff that like you would maybe hear you know in music that would be played at like a rave or you know a club event we take it and discon deconstruct it and kind of mess with it so it's a little more abstract it's really not to everybody's taste and we're both really exploring more than like saying here's something that people are going to really love and be able to kind of bop their heads to we're really not that interested in that and with music it's tricky because it's it's all been done you know there's so much creativity out there that we really set up to to not to try to try to not follow a lot of conventional rules of, of uh, modern electronic music and you know EDM and dance music and things like that and really try to to go into new territories and maybe fail a lot it's kind of fun to be in this position of not we're not doing it for the money I've also written some things. I've directed an indie feature film and some theater. So, you know, I've done a bunch of different uh, jobs in the industry. There are those moments that you have, you know, in cinema. I think I was like eight years old and my dad took me to 2001. They re-released it. I just watched a, a 70 millimeter print of it on Sunday night at the Arrow Theater, packed house, and realized how much that film just blew my mind when I was eight. I didn't really understand it. It was kind of boring, but I kind of worshipped the filmmaking, if that makes any sense. My wife had worked with Francis Coppola for many years, um, so I was, you know, involved in, in some of those productions early on when I still thought I wanted to be a, just a, a composer. When I was living in San Francisco, where Coppola is based, his son started a very small production company and uh, so I was kind of brought on as a sound person and somebody who knows post and uh, that's that's how I really got into filmmaking. Spirit of 76 was a film that I, I did music editing on and sound design. Um, there was a film called Secret Garden which I always still love. Did sound design on that, uh, sound editing. Um, Godfather 3, I did some music editing and some various other things working mostly assisting the director. I worked on Dracula for a very long time. That I always think of as my grad school because that was over a year and a half of very intensive work. VR is primarily an experience where you are in a virtual reality so you are removed from the present reality and you have a headset so you can only see within the VR space what's being projected on through that headset and not you know what's in the real world anymore. You have headphones, um, you may have um, some sort of, uh, of um, uh, gloves or sometimes a vest that's giving you various physical feedback um, and you can go into a, a space. AR, on the other hand, is uh, augmented reality. Uh, the other term is MR or mixed reality that people are starting to prefer. Um, but that's where you have where you are engaging in the world just like you know we are sitting here but you also have other elements that are projected into that world generally as holograms um, there's a company called Magic Leap that's really fascinating um, they're developing an AR system that would also take the form of sort of glasses that you'd wear that allow you to see the world but also um, you know these objects and they're also talking about screens as well AR would actually um, make the need for a laptop or a television obsolete. If we were wearing these, these devices right now, we could be talking, having this discussion, and then, oh, this is great video on YouTube. We could both look at this wall, and that would, you know, the video would play on that wall. When I first experienced virtual reality, I was actually at the Directors Guild of America, and I and um, it was going to be a, a roller coaster, uh, a VR roller coaster ride, and I, I had really you know poor headphones, and it was an early uh, development version of one of the VR headsets, and um, you know a lot of loud people talking around. And I just thought I'm not gonna have a good experience with this. I put that on. And as the roller coaster ride started, my stomach went into my throat. 
you know, even though I knew that I was sitting in a chair, you know, at the DGA. Um, and that was sort of the moment where I just went, oh, wow, this is a really powerful, potentially a powerful medium, you know, and I wanted to explore it more. I mean, there was a bunch of conferences that I went to and started kind of knowing people who were working a little bit in the field. But as far as teaching it, you know, one of the most exciting things for me is that it's a brand new medium to some degree. Uh, VR, and I also include AR in that. Um, and so, uh, you know, there's not a lot of times in students' lives where a new medium is born. That's been part of what keeps me going. The class is um, working on small little like one and two minute pieces as they go. Uh, these primarily are uh, three, 360 video pieces. So we have a number of very small cameras that have these two fisheye lenses and that allow you to take a 360 video. So they'll do those small projects and then we're doing three larger projects which are um, you know, one's going to be like a, uh, like a two-day shoot with a lot of extras and it's going to take place in a club and so you would basically put on the headset and experience this kind of narrative story in, in 360 degrees. Uh, we have access to like a hundred year old um, hunting lodge or series of cabins in Maine on 12 acres of land on the shores of a very pristine remote lake. And so I was up there last year and um, we were, I, was, I was with a friend of mine who's a carpenter but he's also a production designer and we we're talking about wanting to fix the place up and you know what I was planning on now that now that things are sort of rolling along I want to get back into directing and uh, like horror, I teach a horror class, and so, um, you know, that would be kind of interesting to think of a horror movie, and he said, well, here's your set right here, and I went, oh my god, this is, this is perfect. I came up with the idea of having a website that basically we're soliciting uh, ideas, like pitches, short pitches for the horror film. We have uh, photographs of the place uh, loaded up on the website, it's uh, mainhorror.com, and um, you know, people are putting log lines and 500 word synopsis that they would send to us. And then of, of the group that we've gotten, I think we're about 30 or 40 right now, we'll then maybe pick about a half a dozen and then take that to the next level kind of development phase where the, uh, the writer would uh, write a 10 page treatment um, and maybe also come up with a lookbook or a visual uh, book. And then from there we'll pick one or two and take that to a feature length screenplay. Okay. <laughs> um, I'll wait for you to drink your some more water. See, he's wearing the glasses because he's drinking smart water. <laughs> smart man. <laughs> yeah, smart man.